Whiskey Five Golf Alpha Delta is Three Echo Lima Alpha, Three Echo Louisiana. It's commonly known as ham radio, but the official name given by the Federal Communications Commission is amateur radio. But the value they provide is anything but. I think that the maximum value of ham radio is in its aspect of service to the community. Four Alpha Alabama, okay. People ask me all the time, what do you guys talk about on the radio all the time? And I said, well, it's mostly just technical stuff, people sharing ideas, people just jawboning, you know, in their efforts. I said, but what they're really doing, although, you know, they're not going to admit this, they're not going to say it out loud, what they're really doing is they're practicing for an emergency. They're, they're keeping their station up. They're, they're proving their ability to communicate because when they're needed, that's when they really kick into gear. QSL, the One Delta, South Carolina, thanks for the contact. And to be ready when they are called upon, every summer in the last weekend in June, ham radio operators participate in an event called Field Day, where amateur radio operators in North America test their equipment in a contest to see how many other hams they can contact. The Jefferson Amateur Radio Club's call sign, authorized by the FCC, is W5GAD. Whiskey 5, Golf Alpha Delta. And they are listening for call signs from all over the United States and Canada. Uh, again, again, V3ERC, please again. Many feel that in the era of global communications with a smartphone and the availability of the internet, ham radio is a bit outdated. Reality is, the service amateur radio provides is needed more than ever. With public safety communications increased reliability on cell phones and radio systems that rely on the internet or interconnectivity between their radio towers, these systems, while very sophisticated, tend to fail in a major disaster. Uh, amateur radio will operate when all else fails, when the typical infrastructure like the cellular network fails and no, is no longer available. The reason amateur radio does not fail is that it doesn't rely on the internet or any other system. And Don Olson says if your emergency communications plan is a cell phone. They're naive. These, these people haven't probably been through the types of disasters that New Orleans sees on occasion. And uh, uh, I, I try to educate them to the, stand, to the standpoint that their cell phones can be turned off by a storm, uh, by a power outage, by the government, with just the flip of a switch or the, the bolt of a lightning, whatever, and their, their cell phone is worthless because it's not point to point. It it's actually re relies on these cell towers to work. And uh, if there's no power, if there's no cell tower, if there's no <clears throat> government willingness to allow them to, to work, your, your cell phone is worthless, unless you just use it as a calculator. And then when the battery runs down, you don't even have that. So. Whiskey 7, Oscar Tango Victor. Uh, your class in your uh, section, please. Well, during Hurricane Katrina and Isaac and Gustav and, and all of these hurricanes that, you know, come into our area here in the Gulf Coast, uh, ham radio operators were able to use their own equipment that they furnish, their transceivers, uh, you know, powered by generators or batteries and their own antenna systems to maintain communications uh, throughout the, the affected area. Amateurs or ham radio operators can keep the various fire, police, and emergency operation centers talking. Hams were uh, stationed at the uh, emergency operations centers, uh, different facilities, hospitals, and other public service facilities, and they were able to relay uh, traffic communications between these facilities to coordinate relief efforts that, that take place in the aftermath of one of these events. Uh, Whiskey Alpha 7, uh, Foxtrot Quebec Delta, please copy, 3 Echo Louisiana, Kyosan. While public safety may be the main reason amateurs are given access to the valuable radio spectrum by the FCC, there is still some magic to it that keeps hams experimenting and playing radio. We'll try it right there. Uh, right now I am uh, involved in all the HF bands. Uh, and I usually am just a weekend warrior on those, but at the same time I'm trying to get into the satellite communications and I find that to be extremely challenging. Uh, the equipment is um, sophisticated. Uh, you can do it simple, 
but to do it right, it really gets sophisticated. And I've had some success, and I've had a lot of failures. 6.26. <laughs> I'm surprised every time I get on the air because you just don't know who is going to be on the other end of that communications. If you throw your call sign out there, you just don't know who's going to come back and answer your call to make a contact and what country they might be from, what equipment they're operating and, and just in the most casual instances where we were sitting down testing a radio and an antenna, you end up making a contact with a person that's on some tiny island somewhere. You just don't know who you're going to speak to when, when you make that communication. Many think that it's hard to get an amateur license and that it's only for those very technically minded. It's not hard to get a ham license. A lot of people say, oh man, all of this technical stuff, wow, you know, I'll never, I'll never learn all of that. And it's like, the ham license is very simple. Exhibit one, you know, the seven-year-old that comes in and gets the ham license. The first ham license is just learning the rules. You have to know a little bit about Ohm's Law. That's really not tough for somebody who knows any sort of arithmetic. And as for the typical ham radio operator. Oh my goodness, I don't know that there is one. Really, I mean, we go from spectrum to spectrum. Uh, I don't think it, it, it aligns with intelligence. I don't think it aligns with, uh, 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 you know, technical ability. I don't think it aligns with uh, any sort of a class in society. Uh, I think that you'll find hams in every walk of life. Whiskey 5, Golf Alta Delta. Clubs like the Jefferson Amateur Radio Club in Metairie, Louisiana, cater to those with a wide variety of interests. Local communications, DX or worldwide communications, voice or even digital communications with computers. There is something for everyone. And club members can help you get licensed and explore all that amateur radio has to offer. As we do courses here and as we do the testing, what I try to explain to them is that merely having a license to transmit, you still don't know how to run a radio. And so the usefulness of the club here is to teach you how to get your first radio, what to do with it, teach you all of the avenues that are out there to find your particular interest. Mm -hmm.